What are you doing in the strawberries? Hey, what are you doing in there? So you want to build a food forest, but you don't know what to grow. A lot of videos might jump right to what a lot of people would consider the most important thing in the food forest. Trees. Peach tree. I could do a list on uh, top trees to use in your cold hardy Canadian um, food forest. I'm actually going to skip to the bushes. And why? Because the bush layer is probably the most underrated layer in the food forest. In terms of sheer production, how fast it can get up making you food and money, maybe, right off the get-go. Um, in a cold hardy food forest, we're talking zones 4 to 8, maybe 4 to 9, 3 to 9. Everything in this video is going to be good for uh, if you're in that USDA agricultural zone. So we're going to talk about bushes because bushes are very underrated and these are my top bushes for your food forest that you're going to start this weekend. Stick around. So if you're just getting started and you haven't seen my video on the seven layers of the food forest, it's called companion planting on steroids. And I touch on this in almost every video, but we don't plant, or I don't, I don't plant trees at 20 foot centers. We are actually gonna mimic a natural forest. And the reason why is because a natural forest is the most regenerative system on the planet. It's the system that if everyone disappeared on the planet, forest would take over. Ignore this old pipe, it's just temporary until the pond gets done. I know it's hideous, isn't it? The food forest is about to wake up. It's starting to wake up. We've got bushes leafing out everywhere and it's wonderful. We're very, very excited over here. Um, and today we're gonna talk about bushes and we're gonna talk about seven layers of the food forest and why I think actually bushes are the number one layer and these are my favorite plants for putting into your food forest. The bushes are gonna be what tie the trees together and turn an orchard into a lush, vibrant, crazy forest like this picture right here. And it's gonna get better this year. Believe it or not, this was three years ago and this is what the same place looks like just last year. So get planting, get those bushes growing right in between the trees. Now I know a lot of people are gonna scream because blackberries in some places of the world can be incredibly invasive. They're not bad here, um, but they do really wanna grow and I want stuff that wants to grow. This is a thornless variety. You can see no thorns, which is really nice. Very, very large blackberries great plant just make sure that it can't spread where you don't want it and make sure that you get the fruit so that birds you know don't spread it for you be careful with it but blackberry can be an amazing um, and another amazing cold hardy bush for your food forest all right this next bush comes um, as probably the most underrated bush that i had coming in I bought some currants. Uh, this is black or red. I think this one's red. Uh, I bought currants end of season auction, similar to many other of my bushes. And uh, I got them on sale. They were dirt cheap because no one was going for them. I had them. They're a little bit sour. They're a little bit tart. The white currants are a little sweeter. The blacks are the tartest, I find. Um, what I didn't realize is just how good black currant jam is. Probably my favorite jam, maybe Hascap jam beats black currant jam, but um, I think there's something magical with sour jams. Sour berries making great jams. You can put very little sugar in them actually, and they end up very sweet. They got this nice tang to them, just a deep complex uh, flavor. 
And the best thing about currants, besides being cold hardy and great for bees, um, is actually that they're very shade tolerant. So if you have a shade garden, you have large overstory trees that you're trying to put a food forest in underneath, this right here is where you want to go for your, um, your bush layer. Lots and lots of currants. All right, next up we got elderberries. Elderberries is a great medicinal plant. Um, good luck getting any because the birds absolutely love them. But if you manage to get any of them, they make a great uh, syrup and a great jam. Um, they're very tall bushes, so if you want like a really, really lush forest look, elderberries can be where you go. You can get them on sale. This one you could see here. I still have the tag from four years ago. It's holding up pretty well too. $21.99. I got this end of, se end of season for two bucks. End of season auctions, clearance sales, that's where you want to go. Elderberry is a great option. A favorite bush absolutely is Hascaps. This is like a very cold hardy blueberry that's got bell shaped blueberries. The bees absolutely love it. It comes up super early, so it gives uh, nectar and food source for the bees before anything else does. It's just gorgeous. It makes, it's a very tart berry, so if you like sour fruit, then this is the one for you. But even if you don't, it makes amazing jam. Amazing, amazing jam. It's got a ton of pectin in it, so you can put less sugar in your jam, so it's a healthier jam. And it's honestly... Um, sour berries, especially like a, a has cap, a sour berry in a jam can make the best jams you can ever imagine. Has cap, a very, very cold hardy, amazing, prolific, tall bush, very easy to propagate. Uh, in fact, I'm actually stool, stool mounding this one here. So how you propagate these, a great way is just level is actually here on this swale and I mound soil up all around so that each branch is covered in soil and then end of the season I can dig this sorry about that end of the season I can dig this back I can chop and cut and this will all have rooted down into the wood or into the soil and I'll have a rooted branch that I can propagate I have turned I think three has caps into probably about 80 right now. Amazing plant. Raspberries are going to be probably my number one. I don't think I could, I don't think I could honestly put anything above raspberries for a few reasons. First off, a wild raspberry is like, I'm sorry, not a wild, but a homegrown raspberry does to your mouth what a homegrown strawberry does. If you think that you've had a raspberry before, but you don't grow raspberries and you haven't had your own, you've never eaten a real raspberry. They were probably my number one favorite crop last year in terms of just pure taste. These ones are ever bearing um, and they uh, fruit twice. They fruit one at the end of the season, once early in the season. Um, so they give you two fruit yields every single season and they spread. This was five to eight ish raspberries when I planted them and they have spread out into many more, but more than that, I've been digging them up, digging the runners up and spreading them. And these things have been spread all throughout my food forest, all down this swale, all raspberries in the backyard in the front area near the road near the road i've given to raspberry bushes to people father-in-law uh, sister-in-law so many people neighbors so so many raspberries have come out of this and it's three years old i spent maybe i think ten dollars for eight plants it was roughly that at the end of the season auction and it has grown me hundreds and hundreds of dollars of food they really really turn that financial equation around because they produce so quick they spread so quick 
you can sell canes for a dollar each and still come in under stores who sell them for like $9.99 each. Um, just an amazing crop if you want to make money, if you want to grow awesome tasting food, and if you want to fill in the spaces between your fruit trees, raspberries, you come look in another month or so, and this patch will just be a sea of green, and it'll make my whole system look so incredibly lush, and I will actually have rabbits living inside the raspberry patch. Amazing crop. I couldn't put a list together of top bushes without putting raspberries at number one. 100%. I'm going to do a separate video on specifically nitrogen fixing trees, but this one is special enough to have its own part of the food crop berry level of a cold hardy Canadian permaculture food forest. This is sea buckthorn or sea berry. It is considered to be invasive. All nitrogen fixers are going to be considered to be invasive because our soils on our planet are pretty much destroyed. And that's what these things do. They move in and they heal. Um, sea buckthorn berries have one of the most healthiest berries on the planet. It is just absolutely incredibly healthy. It tastes like Buckley's medicine because it is medicine. However, it does actually, believe it or not, make fantastic jams and other drinks. You can eat them raw, but they will be an acquired taste, to say the least. They have a really, really nice look when um, they put berries on. The berries cluster right up against the tree, right up against the branches, and right in on the thorns. This makes them difficult to harvest, but what you can do, actually, because this is a nitrogen fixer, is get clumps, cut the branch right off. That's going to release nitrogen under the ground via the um, symbiotic relationship with mycorrhizal bacteria that are holding nitrogen in their bodies. And then you can freeze the branch, put it in your freezer, give it a day, take it out the next day, bang it into a um, little mesh covered uh, wheelbarrow or something like that, and then collect the berries that way. They'll just fall right off. Very, very great tree, very ornamental, nitrogen fixer, feeds and flushes out life to all your other uh, plants, healthiest berry on the planet. You know, what's not to love about this incredible bush? Except, well, what's not to love? Maybe the death thorns. If you have, uh, apparently there's some thornless varieties. This obviously is not one of them. These are literally like nails, like spikes. So um, be really careful where you put these not just for spreading, but for where you walk. And as he says that, he puts it right next to a walking path through the strawberries. So I'm gonna be cutting these, making it so I can actually walk by here without getting absolutely impaled by these insane thorns. Like, look at these things. Those are not fun. And they, that, this is how not fun they are. The thorns have thorns. The thorns have thorns, guys. And in the spirit of gardening for nature and with nature, I'm going to mention roses. Roses are beautiful flowers. They're great insect attractors. And roses, wilder roses, like Rosa ragosa, ragusa, um, are actual edible. You can actually eat the rose hips. Most roses you can make tea out of the rose hips, but Rosa Rugosa you can actually eat the thing. Um, it's not great, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not great, but a beautiful flower. It's got thorns, but um, it can be great for keeping deer out, using it as a thick deer wall, um, or just, you know, growing up a trellis and looking all fantastic. So don't forget to make your food forest look good. You've got a lot of food growing in there. Um, it's okay to put some stuff out there that's gonna catch someone's eye, get them asking questions about your food forest, and then you can take them in and show them how awesome this can be. So uh, don't forget the roses.